Okay, thanks for sharing your lunch with me. I'm sure you've been um, spoken at and to lots this session. Today I'm going to talk about tail spend. Um, I'm going to talk about how you can identify and minimize the impact of your tail spend on your working capital. Doesn't that sound exciting? Are we all see it? Are we all finance or what's the finance procurement split here? Hands up if you finance. You all look really happy about it as well. <laughs> okay, good. Know your audience. So I'm uh, Sophie Pope. I'm the director of sales for the UK and Nordics um, for a company called Determine, who are part of the Corecentric group. Who is Corecentric? Well, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about our products in a minute. But the big numbers that I want you to take from this session are, um, we actually automate business processes. So we're not just a procurement technology company. We're not just a finance process company. We automate business processes right the way from procurement to finance to legal. We make things easier and quicker online, right? That's what everyone's doing. Um, so we've got over 6,000 customers. We've got about 550 people. Headquarters in um, Cherry Hill in New Jersey, but I'm based in London. And this is quite an important number because you guys like numbers. Um, people use our systems to process $225 billion uh, worth of transactions on a year. So it's quite a lot of money. And um, the other thing that I want you to take away from this is that 95%. So in an, in, in an era where people are generally quite dissatisfied with a lot of their technology providers, ours like us, and they stay with us 95% plus of the time. Okay, so what do we do? I'm going to talk a little bit about our platform and then we'll, we'll talk about the, um, the tail spend. So this is the Determine Cloud platform and there's two things that really I want you to remember about this. We are one of the only cloud-based, true software as a service providers in the industry. These guys might tell you different, but we are. This platform is actually built on your data. So it's a central store, single source of truth for all of your data. Everyone's got systems all over the place. ERP, clunky, hard to use, inflexible. You have different systems for different functions within your organization. Our platform houses all of these functions within one platform. You've got apps that sit on top, depending on what part of the process you want to control or automate. So we actually manage everything from, I want a supplier, I'm going to find a supplier, I'm going to check that that supplier is right for my business, and what risk that supplier poses to my business. I'm going to collect the information relevant to that supplier. You guys know all about that. Uh, to understand their, their compliance, their chances of survival, their financial liquidity. Um, and then we build the suppliers into strategic sourcing events. So that would be who is the best supplier for providing this particular goods or services. Negotiate a price, lock it into a contract. From the contract, you want to make sure that your procurement people are buying, issuing POs from negotiated contracts, so that's the controlled spend, okay? So you can't do that if everything is all over the place and no one really trusts the data that, that they're looking at. So this is our platform, we go from um, Contracts to creating purchase orders to the tactical end of procurement, clever AI stuff to uh, read your invoicing, automatically matching and sticking it in your cost allocation buckets, whatever. And then we, we um, integrate with ERP on the back end, so that's how they get paid. So this is our platform. Um, I'm going to talk a bit more about that shortly, but the point of our platform and the reason that we're different um, is that actually there's, there's loads of business processes that go on that, that you guys have to ultimately be able to see and control at any 
at any point, not directly, but ultimately the cash value you need to know, or the money, you need to know what's going on. Data in your business isn't linear. It doesn't go from A to B via C, as some providers would, would want you to, to go through the process. Every procurement process or legal process or finance process has touch points with, every, uh, with lots of other processes in your, in your system, right? So why would you manage your data as if it goes from one, one place to the next? You need to be able to see at any one time what's going on with your POs and invoicing whilst managing what contracts you're creating on that supplier, whilst managing how much of that contracted spend you've put POs against. Who's managing that budget? Uh, is that supplier doing a good job? Do we want to raise a dispute on that supplier so that we can't keep blindly creating more contracts with them without having everything joined up. So the idea is that, okay, this looks a bit complex, but really the idea is there's lots of business process going on. How can they be efficient if you don't know what everyone else is doing? And you guys, particularly in finance, really you're responsible for knowing about all of it. Right? and having the ability to control different parts of the process without sometimes being involved. So, feel for you guys. Um, okay, so these are some of our clients, big names, um, AWS there. We've, we're, we're actually big in, in uh, transport in the UK and in uh, biotech and in financial services. Anywhere where there's like highly regulated um, processes, they need to control their supplier risk and they need to, to understand their spend, uh, well, which is everywhere, right? But um, the point of this slide is that you, it's loads of different industries and it just is kind of reflective of the fact that the system is really flexible. You don't have one size fits all we allow you to create your business processes so that you can control your own processes as to how they work. So we can provide the same system to a retail organization or a services, financial professional services organization, and you can build your own workflow, build what, supply, what information you want your suppliers to provide, build your own contract workflow, build your own PO systems. Okay, so it's self-serve. What I was going to talk about today is working capital. It's not my forte of subjects, but um, I thought I'd pick something that had a synergy between CFOs and CPOs, right? So why it matters, some quick checkbox um, indicators that you might have a problem with your tail spend, and what you can do about it. So why, oops, sorry, why working capital matters? Well, if 2018 was the year of technology transformation, everyone is saying that word, it's driving me mad, it's been going on for ages. Anyway, if we decided that we need to invest in digital technology last year, this year is the year that we have to find the money to pay for it. Um, Obviously, we've got a volatile um, uh, economy at the moment, potentially new tariffs, potentially new risks, rocketing transport costs. We need to be able to prove not only that we can manage our short-term liabilities, pay our suppliers, etc., but maybe invest on the downturn so that we can be attractive to our customers and to investors and also have the flexibility to be able to play around with things like payment terms for the small suppliers um, to, to attract um, uh, startups, etc. So it's important that we have good liquidity, efficiency, and it, it shows that our company is well managed, and then obviously have cash to be able to do what you want to do. So 
Does anyone know what tail spend is? Everyone know what tail spend is? So tail spend is like the unknown purchasing. And it's called a tail because if you plotted the amount you spend with this number of suppliers, it tails off like a tail, right? So this is the unmanaged, strategically sourced, dark purchasing that is usually related to indirect spend. So stuff that keeps the business running but isn't related to direct sale of goods, but is stuff that is too small value to be bothered with a strategic sourcing event. You don't usually have a contract for it. There's loads of suppliers. They might be one-offs. You might not have um, frequency of purchase to make them into a contract. So it's like unknown, basically. And I think that the latest figures that we saw from Accenture are that you could, you could be looking at tens of millions of pounds in tail spend that you just don't know about. Obviously, it depends on your overall spend. But between anything between 10 and 40 percent, it could be unknown, unknown spend. So it's a lot of money. It can be a lot of money. It depends on how you classify it. Some signs that you might have that um, uh, you might have a problem with your tail. I was actually going to wear a tail today, and then I thought, nah, I don't know whether that's really the right image I want to portray. But you would have remembered, wouldn't you? Like, oh, grasp your tail, segment your tail. Anyway. Um, so signs you've got a problem with your tail spend. If two thirds or more of your suppliers um, account for less than 5% of your overall spend. If less than 70% of your spend is managed through purchasing. If less than 50% is managed through preferred suppliers with negotiated contracts. Or with less than 50% is automated. Or if you've got more suppliers than you've got employees, it's probably a sign that you have quite a large tail spend, which is lots of suppliers, small values. What do you do with it? It's expensive to manage. Your procurement people are expensive to manage it. Um, it may need infrastructure and uh, policy change in order to actually deal with this differently. You might have, I don't know, procedures to say anything below five grand, sod it, we don't care. Um, I was actually talking to a CPO recently of a very large telecoms company and she, they have the, uh, this, you know, below five grand automatic payment for invoicing. She was like, to her CFO, I guarantee you that I can get at least three below five grand invoices through from my fictitious company and she did it and they got paid. So it was like, okay, well this, obviously you need rules and people can't spend all their time focused on the small stuff, but actually the small stuff now can be quite, especially if you're in retail, can be quite a sizable chunk. So how do you attack it? An easy way to look or to see if there needs to be a strategy is you can list everything you spend from the highest expense to the lowest expense, chop off the top 20%. And if you've got anywhere higher or lower than 80% of your spend for the, for the other suppliers, then it, there's probably an imbalance there. Best in class organizations have 86% spend managed under contracts. So most people who haven't gone through this kind of exercise will probably be looking at about 60% um, of the suppliers covering that uh, amount. So we've talked about um, identifying the list and working out where you need to start. There's a couple of sort of strategies, if you like, for, for analyzing the data that's left. One I'm going to tell you about is the hidden tail, which is basically, this is spend with preferred suppliers that is not captured either on a contract or people aren't quoting the contract when they make the purchase. 
So you might have, um, you know, a, a preferred supplier, and you've suddenly got kind of a hundred thousand pounds worth of spend because those items weren't specified in the contract, or no one knew the contract was there, so they weren't referencing it. So you've got this hidden tail, which is with your preferred suppliers, but it's not captured under the contract terms, so you're not getting the preferential rates. Then you've got the head of the tail, which is basically the majority of where the money is, and that's probably where you want to focus. So as you go down the tail, the number of suppliers increases, the value of the transaction uh, decreases, and so does you know, the amount of effort that you should probably be putting in because the return on your effort is not going to be huge. So really the... <laughs> it's quite... Um, it's quite obvious where I'm going with this. What, what do you do to manage your tail? Well, you automate it because no one's got time to be dealing with that kind of level of strategic sourcing. You've got two options. You push it under managed spend or you just automate it so that no one sees, but you have visibility of it. So the idea is the dark purchasing or that tail spend is invisible to you right now. The first step is to make it visible, right? So how do you do that? When you see it, you can manage it, but if you have e-procurement systems, you can automate how people not just buy off catalogs, but how they um, create requisitions for purchasing in the, first, in the first instance. Or on the other end, you can um, uh, ingest your invoices and automatically create POs on those invoices so that you've got visibility of what's been spent at, at, against that uh, number. So the idea is that you, you need to have a system that everyone's going to use and that they're going to um, easily be able to translate from I want this to approving that requisition sending it out to tender if you want for a quick three bid for you, through your procurement team and then creating the PO and invoice. So you either have the option of pushing it into managed spend via your procurement team or you automate the whole process so that they just request something from catalogues or from, um, from what we call open requisitions and then that goes through the system and then you've got visibility of what what is being spent and then you can do something about it. So essentially it's about automating the process, using a system that is you know, accessible to everyone um, and capturing the spend through, through the system without having loads of time to manage it. Other thing is visibility of contracts, right? So if you see that there's a contract, you know your preferred suppliers, you see what you're spending with them, visibility is key basically. Um, so yeah, you, it's thought that you can reduce Maverick spend by 20 to 40 percent. Um, we've seen some best-in-class organisations getting, you know, 15, 20 percent cost saving based on initiatives on, on looking at their tail spend, um, and of course, you know, pay for the software that does it because you, you've suddenly uh, saved some money on on what you didn't know about. So it's basically all about having that data available to you to see what's happening and then um, putting, working more closely with your procurement team to manage that spend. So that is it and I don't think we have time for questions and you guys I think have another session um, but if you want to come and talk to us we're at booth five here. Oh I didn't tell you about that, that's fine. It's basically what I said already, which is good. Um, so yeah, we're over here. If you want to come and talk to us, please do. Um, we are um, yeah, happy, happy to talk more about cash or procurement or all those tales. Or <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone.